Okay. Last week we had lunch with Bob and Sue Carden and he was telling me about, he went to a meeting uh, and where one of his speakers he likes to visit and or listen to. But at the, throughout the meeting, he kept, his eyes kept going to this one lady. Uh, and he wasn't really sure why God was drawing his attention to her. But at the end of the meeting, when he still didn't know, he started, he did stop and talk to her. And they ended up, he mentioned about speaking in tongues. We was praying for her during the meeting and speaking in tongues for her. And she kind of lit up because she didn't speak in tongues and she wanted to. And Bob is real good at leading people into speaking in tongues. So uh, when he did lead her into speaking in tongues, she didn't speak in tongues. She sang in tongues. And she's a singer. So that was how God worked in her. And of course, the word does say uh, to, to, we can do that. But in the same week, I listened to a teaching or I read a teaching that Peter Wade uh, from Australia posted about the joy that Peter and Silas had when they were in prison and that they sang. Paul and Silas. Paul, you see, yeah, Paul and Simon. So those two things kind of led me into this teaching, which is uh, sing unto the Lord is the name of the teaching. There is something in us that can only be realized when we sing. Uh, maybe it's because we were created in the image of God and we inherited it from him. That's singing. Uh, let's go to Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. That's probably one of those clean pages in your Bible, because it's not one of the books that uh, we normally go to. <laughs> Fred said they're all clean in his Bible because he's got a digital Bible. So, Zephaniah 3.17. It says, and the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So this is saying that God sings. And he's singing because of his joy that he has for us. Isn't that great? Of course, we like to sing too. And of course, singing uh, we, is one of those things that has great impact, both can be both positive and negative. Because there's a lot of secular songs that invoke emotions. Some are very troubling emotions. But uh, song does that. It also helps you remember things because the Psalms was the word of God in song and it helped people remember. And I remember talking to uh, some believers in, from India and they don't have a lot of people who have been educated in writing and they can't read. So they help people memorize the scriptures by putting it into song. So they have a lot of song service. Oh. But we're gonna to go to 2 Chronicles 29. And here's an occasion where people were being brought back to God that had been separated from God by their leader. And the king was the leader. Okay. And the king was the leader uh, of not only for the administration part of the country, but also they were the spiritual leader uh, of the country. And if a king was good, 
he could do great things for his people to bring them into fellowship with God. And if they were evil or they were even neutral, the people would kind of be scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And the adversary was would rack and ruin their lives. So uh, here we have uh, in uh, 2 Chronicles 29, verse 1. Now, Hezekiah was the son of an evil king, and his name was Ahaz. And he brought uh, into the people worship of idols and other gods. And he actually closed the doors to the temple, and it became like a barren place. And if you have the doors closed long enough, you know, it gets just dirty and and it gets to be a mess. So because of that, a lot of trouble came to the, to the believers, to Israel. A lot of things happened bad for them. But Hezekiah, his son, had a mother who was a great believer. And certainly the parents have great impact on their children. But here you have Hezekiah coming in and he's going to put things straight. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and 20 years old, and he reigned nine and 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of who? Zechariah. Of course, he was a prophet. And he did that which was right in the sight of God, according to all that David, his father, had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors to the house of the Lord and repaired them. Let's go to verse 25. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and with harps, according to the commandment of David and of Gad, the king's, over, king's, king's seer, and Nathan, the prophet. For so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offerings upon the altar. And when the burnt offerings began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. <clears throat> you know, so there's a lot of reference back to how David set that pattern, and he set some new things in the worship of God. And so they were going back to that that David had established. And all the congregation worshiped, and the singers sang, and the trumpets sounded, and all this continued until the burnt offerings was finished we are so blessed with musicians and singers songwriters and, and those people in our ministry that bring this kind of spiritual uplifting to us they're inspired by god they have a, a wonderful ministry that god's put in their hearts and we're very very thankful And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and Asaph the seer. And they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now ye have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a free heart burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was three score and ten bullocks, a hundred rams, two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. 
Were the people blessed that this was happening? This is obvious. They are giving of their great abundance in the worship of God. But the priests were too few so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Therefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was ended. And until the other priests had sanctified themselves, for the Levites were among, were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Now that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. They had been living for 20 some years without doing the priest stuff because of the king had brought in this worship of other gods. And some of their hearts weren't ready to, to do this. So they needed to rededicate their own lives. But I was wonderful that the Levites were willing to step up and do the job. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. They were, they were kind of like the, the layman. They were, the priests had to come from, all of them were Levites. And the priests were also of the house of Aaron, they had to be the high priest. But you see, they were ready to jump in. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was what? Set in order. Things were brought back the way God wanted them to be. But how was this brought in? With song. With song. Singing unto the Lord. There's things that happen that can only happen when you sing in your heart and in your life. And Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. And that it wasn't like, oh, well, we got to plan a year out. When he, within the first year that he took office, probably very quickly in that year, man, this was his first priority. And it brought the people together before God. There was joy in their hearts because they were bringing, being brought back to worshiping God. And they did that in Psalm. Let's go to Acts 16, verse 16. Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass. As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Uh, this is one of those uh, people we have them around today, fortune tellers, you know, palm readers, tarot cards, all those kind of things. That's what they're suffering from is this spirit of divination. The same followed Paul and us and cried out, Cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That sounds good, right? But she's doing it over and over and over again. It was, a, it was meant to be a distraction. So that when they said things, she was speaking over them. You see, that, that was the point of what the Spirit was trying to do, was disrupt the word from being presented. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour or right away. Why did he wait several days? I mean, why, why was this going on? And the point is, is that these casting out of spirits can only be done by revelation. All right, and so he was waiting for the go sign. And when it caught it, he said it, and the spirit came out. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, again, it all goes back to money. 
that's kind of the, the, the common thread in all this evil stuff. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Now, in the first place, this is worship, pagan worship city. The Jews didn't already have a good name because they believed in one God and all these guys were promoters of the pantheon of gods. So they weren't looking at them as Christians. They were looking at them as Jews talking about this Jesus, okay? And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Now, that's what happens with cr crowds that turn into a riot. There's somebody stirring them up. Okay, there's got to be somebody stirring them up. That's usually somebody has a spirit. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Okay, in those times, uh, if a jailer allowed somebody to escape, he had to pay with his own life. So there was a great motivation for the jailer to do his job right. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. So they weren't going to just walk out. They were in stocks. You remember the old kind of things where they had to put their hands and feet mm -hmm. and then they closed them off so they couldn't move? All right. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and did what? Yeah. Sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. So why would you sing in such a bad circumstance? The thing is, they're singing for joy. What, what about this has joy in it? It's because they knew the promises of God. They were looking at the promises of God and the great privilege they had to be there because they were speaking the word. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were what? Shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands was loosed. Even that stock? Yes. All the other prisoners' bands were loosed? Yes. It says everyone's. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep, most of the keepers slept there, okay? It wasn't like they got shifts going here. They slept there. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out a sword, his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, another time, a man was in prison and an angel walked him out. But here, they didn't go out because this guy was about ready to believe. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou must do what? Shall be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house. And what started this miracle? Prayer and singing. Prayer and singing. We sing not because of the conditions we are in, either good or bad, but because we have joy in our hearts, because we know that we know that God is with us all the time. We'll finish up in Romans 
chapter 15, verse 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ is a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. When Jesus Christ's ministry was on earth, he was to minister to the house of Israel. Some Gentiles got blessed because it was like the woman uh came and asked him to pray and she says well even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the table so some of some of those guys got blessed but it wasn't his ministry to take the word to them but it was his ministry to eventually allow us to be saved as well and that the gentiles might glorify god for his mercy. You see, mercy is withholding of justice and judgment. When you did something wrong, grace is divine favor when you didn't do anything to deserve it. But mercy is, yeah, you deserved it, but God forgave you. So did the Gentiles deserve death? because they had rejected God? Well, in the grand scheme of things, yes. That is the thing that Jesus Christ came to deliver us from is death. And so without him, there is only death. But the Gentiles now have life. They have life because they receive the mercy. As it is written, for this cause, I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and do what? Shame Sing Lord. unto thy name. What a great privilege we have to be able to lift up our voices and praise to God. So as we go through our day, I encourage you to not only speak in tongues, but to sing and to sing in tongues as well. Because sing is the song is in our heart. Let's just let it out.